Assalamualaikum and greetings to all of you. We are the researcher from University Putra Malaysia and we will be presenting about the Rashid Blight disease. Rashid Blight is one of the most economically significant rice disease worldwide. This disease causes significant grain yield and quality losses. Yield losses up to 50% have been reported under most conducive environments. Crop losses may range from slight, slight to heavy yield each year. Depending on whether the plant grows stage when infection occurs, the extent of infection and the rice varieties grow. Sheet blight is a soil-borne disease caused by the fungus Rhizoctonia solani. The fungus The fungus belongs to the phylum Basidiomycota, family Ceratobasidiaceae. In 1858, Julius Cohn observed and described a fungus on diseased potato tubers and named it Rhizoctonia solani. Rhizoctonia solani is from ancient Greek. Solanum, Latin for nightshade, is the genus of the potato. The disease cause was well known before the discovery and description of the fungus. The Zoctonia solani is a plant pathogenic fungus with a wide host range and worldwide distribution. It was discovered more than 100 years ago. Zoctonia solani frequently exists as, as trade like growth of, on plants or in culture and is considered a soil borne pathogen. The Rhizoctonia sheet disease complex comprising Rhizoctonia solani, Rhizoctonia oryzae, and Rhizoctonia oryzae sativae. It will attack paddy leaves and infected leaves dry out and die more rapidly. Young tillers can also be destroyed. As a result, the leaf area on the, of the canopy can significantly be reduced by the disease. This reduction in leaf area along with the disease induced, induced senescence of leaves and young infected tillers are the primary causes of yield reduction. Rhizoctonia solani is best known to cause various plant disease such as collar rot, root rot, damping off and wire stem. Rhizoctonia solani attacks its host when they are in the early stage of development, such as seeds and seedlings, seedlings which are typically found in soil. The pathogen is known to cause serious plant losses by attacking primarily the roots and lower stem of plants. Rhizoctonia solani frequently exists as trait like growth on plants or in culture and is considered a soil borne pathogen. Pathogen is not currently known to produce any asexual spores, though it is considered to have an asexual life cycle. Occasionally, sexual spores or basidious spores are produced on infected plants. The fungus produces the potato mycelium, which are higher line when young, yellowish brown when old. It produces large number of spherical brown sclerotia. Favorable conditions, high relative humidity, 96 to 97%, high temperature, 30 to 30 to C, closure planting, heavy dose of nitrogenous fertilizer. Chlorosia and mycelia in infected plant debris are two primary sources of anoculum. During the cropping season or at Harvest sclerosia for on the ground and serve as survival structure from one cropping season to the other. They survive for long period in the soil with up to two years in temperature rise production areas and frequently accumulate in the field over time. Field water movements and irrigation support the dispersal of sclerotia and Infected plant debris. Initial infections start with a <coughs> scrotum or a piece of infected debris floating on the water surface and coming in contact with the trees. 
the fungus gets attracted to the chemical stimuli released by the rice host, germinating sclerosia or mycelia in debris penetrates the plant tissues either by means of natural openings or by specialized infection. Structures called oppressoria or infection cousins. The fungus also produce extracellular enzymes that degrade plant cell walls to facilitate colonization. Once the fungus penetrates and colonizes the plant tissue, symptoms are initiated. The fungus grow upwards on the plant, penetrates and infects upper lip sheath, lip blade, and panicles. Okay, now I will continue with the symptoms of the Ryan sheath fly. Every symptom usually develop on the leaf sheath, as in water line as secular, over or ellipsoid water sock spots which are greenish gray in color. As the disease progress, they enlarge and tend to collect forming larger lesions with grayish white centers surrounded by tan to dark brown irregular borders. Infection can spread to leaf blades and cause irregular lesions with dark green, brown or yellow orange margins. The lesion can develop and collects on partition or whole leaf blades, which may produce a rattlesnake skin pattern. These damaged tissues interrupt the normal flow of water and nutrients to the plant tissue above leaves and pedicles. As the plant approaches heading, the canopy becomes dense, creating a humid microclimate that is favorable for the rapid development of the disease. The disease may move up the plant and affect the flat leaves and panicles under several conditions. The fungus can spread into the calms from early shed infections and weaken the affected calms resulting in the lodging and columns of dealers. The damage caused by sheet plaque range from partial infection of the lower sheets with little impact on green filling to the premature death of plants and lodging with a significant reduction in green yield and quality. Thank you. Hi everyone. I want to explain about material and methods for diagnostic tests. First one is fungal cultures. Fungal isolates were obtained from the leaf sheets of infected rice plants or from soil and maintained on potato de dextrose agar. It was identified using traditional morpho morphological methods. Then isolates of R or Z. 18 of R or Z sativae and 24 of R solely were obtained from the leaf sheets of infected rice plants or from soil rice based cropping system. 21 isolates of R solely were also obtained from range of hosts including soybean, maize, wheat, cowpea, potato, groundnuts, grass, comelina species, beta vulgaris, and Cornea precipice. Mycelium for DNA extraction was ground by inoculating 50 ml potato. Dextrose brought in 250 ml conical flasks with mycelial fragments. Cultures were incubated on, a, on an orbital shaker in about 36 degrees Celsius for approximately 5 days depending on the growth rate of the isolate. Second one is DNA extraction. 
Spangle mycelium was harvested by filtering through what man number one, filter paper and freeze dried. The mycelium was then ground in liquid nitrogen and total genomic DNA extracted from isolates using the extraction method of Lodi et al. Scale down uh, to adult volumes and omitting the addition of beta backup tautanol. Third one is polymerase change reaction for nucleotide sequencing. Initial amplifications of uh, the DNA gene fragment were performed using the primer ITS1 and ITS4. The fourth one is DNA sequencing and data analysis. Each PCR product was uh, purified using the wizard DNA clean up system according the, to the man manufacturer's instructions. Isolates were sequenced using double stranded DNA template. Sequencing uh, was conducted using a PE applied biosystem model 373A. DNA sequencer as uh, recommended by the manufacturer. The sequencer, the sequence uh, data of complementary strands were compared visually and sequences aligned using cluster D. The fifth one, one is uh, artificial inoculation of rice leaves with the rhizoctonia pathogens. Infected leaf uh, material were, was obtained by artificial inoculation of leaf sheets following uh, the methods of one man at all. Leaves of rice cultivar IR22 were collected from 60 day old plants and cut to the approximately 60m length. Three pieces were placed onto cotton wool and wet wetted with uh, sterile water in a plastic battery plate. A 3mm coal was excised uh, from the growing margin of a seven day of of a seven day old fungal culture using a cock borer and placed uh, at the center of each leaf at 5 mm distance from inoculum at uh, 2, 3, 5 and 7 days after inoculation and the DNA extracted. The last, the last one is uh, DNA extraction and PCR amplification from the leaf material. Samples uh, were placed in a sterile mortar and 2 ml of extraction buffer added and uh, an uh, and adequate of the DNA extract 1 uh, microliter was used in a PCR reaction and the product separated and visualized on agarose gels. Thank you. For the management options, we have the cultural, biological, and chemical approach. Let's go first to the cultural practices. The disease may be controlled by using resistant varieties. There are no resistant varieties, but research indicates moderately susceptible and moderately resistant varieties are better than a susceptible variety. In fields with a history of losses due to severe sheet blight, less susceptible varieties to sheet blight may be planted, such as Barty, CR1014, Nalini, Pankaj, Ratna, and Tetap. Next is crop rotation, which is another sun strategy, but rotating of rice with soybeans doesn't break the disease cycle. And rotation to other crops is not always practical for many growers. If sheet blight has been a problem in a field in the past and is again planted to rice, you can expect this disease to reoccur and even cause a bigger problems, even if the field has been planted to soybeans for two years. It is safest to plant susceptible varieties in fields where the disease has not previously occurred and rotation will help the control of the disease. However, since the fungus can survive in the soil or in plant debris for years and can reproduce on soybeans, 
Quotation will not assure you that sheet plight will not be a problem. Third is the spacing. Avoiding high seeding rates in nursery and dense planting of seedlings in field of rice could less air movement among the plants. This results in more moisture on the plants from dew and rain and promotes conditions that favor sheet plight development. Transplanting of rice seedlings at spacing of 25 by 25 cm against 15 by 15 cm, the favorable effect of high nitrogen application in disease development could be reduced. Fourth, the nitrogen rates and applications. The new varieties respond to heavy nitrogen applications in order to achieve their high yielding potential. Excessive nitrogen promotes succulent, dense growth of rice that encourage sheet blight. Split nitrogen applications and avoid excessive nitrogen rates can discourage disease development. Moreover, proper balance of nutrients is important in maintaining plant health. Test soil for fertility and apply fertilizer based on recommendations from those tests. Lastly, Control weeds by destroying grasses and other collateral hosts and burning infected straw and stubbles can also reduce infection. Introduction of minimum tillage which merely stirs the soil rather than inverting it improves condition for survival of sclerotia and drain fields as soon as possible to reduce conditions that favor high humidity and more severe disease. Okay, let us now go the chemical approach. Fungicides have been in use since ancient times for the control of plant pathogens. The role of chemicals as fungicides came into recognition only after the fungi were clearly regarded as a cause of plant diseases. In the present day intensive agricultural system, fungicides and herbicides play a key role in the disease management strategy and are instrumental in boosting production level of crops by minimizing the attack of dangerous plant pathogens we have different kinds of fungicides available in the market such as pencycuron hexaconazole propiconazole polycur tyfluzamide and herbicides such as Validomycin A and Coreofungin. Irrational use of chemicals for plant disease control has often caused hazardous effects such as pollution of the environment, toxicity in food materials, and development of resistant races of pathogens. Thus, biological approach has emerged as an alternative and most promising means of the management of plant pathogens. The possible uses of fungal antagonists of rice pathogen have been viewed as an alternative disease management strategy. Among the several antagonists tested by various scientists, species of Trichoderma, Glyoclatum, Aspergillus, and many more have been found effective in reducing the sheet blight and extensively explored for the control of soil-borne plant pathogen. These are the references used for this presentation. We hope that you learned something from this video. Thank you for watching.